Welcome back to the lecture of cholestasis in units and children. I'm Dr. Amal El Faramawi, Professor of Pediatrics in Trams University. In the previous segment, I explained to you what's meant by the pattern of liver disease, the definition of cholestasis, as well as the levels of biliary stasis and the two categories of causes of cholestasis, which are the intrahepatic and the extrahepatic causes. Now in this segment, I'm going to tell you more details about the causes of neonatal cholestasis, cholestasis in older children, what are the treatable causes, and the clinical findings in cholestasis. On the top of the list of extrahepatic causes is extrahepatic biliary atresia, which is the most common cause of extrahepatic cholestasis in neonates. It will be discussed in details along with the cholidocal cyst in the last segment of this lecture. They should be diagnosed early for better surgical outcome. Inspissated bile syndrome is the result of accumulation of bile in canaliculi and in small bile ducts in case of hemolytic disease of the newborn. Cholidocal thesis, spontaneous perforation of bile duct as well as tumors and masses are not very common in units. On the top of the list of intrahepatic causes of cholestasis is inflammation due to perinatal or neonatal hepatitis resulting from infection, whether bacterial, viral, or parasitic. This diagnosis is considered in infants with jaundice, hepatomegaly, vomiting, lethargy, fever, and petechiae. Prenatal infections could be acquired transplacental or during labor due to contact with maternal secretions. Idiopathic neonatal hepatitis, sometimes called giant cell hepatitis, is the most common cause of intrahepatic cholestasis. It is diagnosed after exclusion of other causes, whether infectious, genetic, metabolic, or extrahepatic biliary atresia. 80% of patients with idiopathic neonatal hepatitis recover without significant hepatic fibrosis. Cholestasis is caused also by metabolic diseases as galactosemia, fructosemia, and tyrosinemia. They are frequently accompanied by vomiting, lethargy, poor feeding, hypoglycemia, or irritability. They will be discussed in details in the second lecture, and the rest of metabolic diseases will be discussed in the last lecture. I will give you a hint in the last segment of this lecture about familial cholestatic syndromes, which are inherited causes of cholestasis, and also about paucity of interlobular bile ducts, which means hypoplasia of bile ducts, whether syndromic as allergic syndrome or non-syndromic. Hypothyroidism and hypopituitarism are very important to be detected early as they are treatable with hormonal replacement. The Bat-Kairi syndrome and venoocclusive disease are vascular causes of cholestasis that will be discussed in the next lecture. Chromosomal anomalies, drugs, total parental nutrition, and also infiltration of the liver in case of hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis are all reported to cause neonatal cholestasis. It's quite important to recognize and diagnose the treatable causes of cholestasis as early as possible, as early treatment will tremendously affect the prognosis. Suitable treatment should be initiated very early before irreversible liver damage for both these surgical and medical causes shown in this figure. The differential diagnosis of de novo cholestasis in older children is different than the differential diagnosis in the neonatal period. The extrahepatic causes are now mainly cholidocal cysts, stones in the common bile duct, and inspissated bile syndrome, as well as tumors or masses causing compression on the extrahepatic bile ducts. The intrahepatic causes include also inflammation, but at this age, hepatitis A, in addition to autoimmune hepatitis, drug-induced hepatitis are on the top of the list. From the metabolic causes, Wilson's disease is on the top of causes. The other metabolic diseases would have been started earlier. 
The vascular causes and the infiltration of the liver can occur at any age. Clinically, in all causes of cholestasis, the patient will present with jaundice, pale stool, and dark urine, as you can see in the image, hepatomegaly or hepatosplenomegaly according to the etiology. Fat-soluble vitamins deficiency due to fat malabsorption will cause coagulopathy secondary to defect in vitamin K-dependent clotting factor synthesis. It may lead to intracranial hemorrhage and signs of rickets due to vitamin D deficiency. There will be also pruritus due to retention of bile acids and bile salts, xanthomas due to hypercholesterolemia, and fat malabsorption that will lead to chronic diarrhea and failure to thrive. Other symptoms could be found according to the specific underlying cause. For example, particular rashes may occur in case of intrauterine infection, special facies and congenital heart disease in allergy syndrome, convulsions, mental retardation, microcephaly cataract in galactosemia, Eventually, long-standing unresolved cholestasis will end up with liver cirrhosis, portal hypertension, viruses, ascites, and edema of the lower limb. Well, this is the end of the second segment of this lecture. In the next segment, you will know how to approach a case of cholestasis.